Hi, I'm Koi Bentham, and in this video, I'll cover seven tricks for taking perfectly exposed iPhone photos. The first and foremost tip is to set the exposure manually. Before we begin, let me explain what exposure is. Exposure simply refers to the brightness of an image. Perhaps at some point while you're taking photos, the image appeared too dark for your liking. That would most likely be under exposure, which is when there is less light in a scene. Or your photo appeared way too bright, which we generally refer to as overexposure. So in order to put these terms into context, Let's look at a demo on how to set exposure manually. In this video, you notice that there is a white wardrobe slide which will be our subject. Since the wardrobe slide is the subject, the middle part of the wardrobe slide is tapped so you can set the focus. So there's a yellow square box which shows exactly where you're focusing on. To the right of the yellow square, is a dial with a sun icon which is used to control the intensity of light. The sun dial is typically centered, but sometimes you may want the image to appear darker or brighter. So in order to make it darker, what you have to do is simply slide the dial down. And how do you do that? You do that by swiping down. That is underexposure. As you slowly slide the dial down, you gradually notice that there's less light in the scene. If you slide it all the way to the bottom, the scene becomes completely dark. In the same way, if you slide it all the way up, guess what? The scene becomes too bright and you lose so much detail. And that is what we call overexposure. Sometimes when you move the camera around, the light changes and you may not want to set it again. So what you have to do is tap and hold on the screen for a couple of seconds where you see the subject, which in our case is the white wardrobe slide. You know exposure has been locked when you see AEAF lock on display on the top part of the native camera screen. Even when you change the perspective a bit, you can come back and the lighting and setting will be the same because you successfully lock the exposure. So now that we have an idea on how to control exposure manually, let's look at another tip which is using exposure to set the desired tone in a photo. Take a look at these two photos the first thing you immediately realize is that it's pretty much the same location. The skylines and sky create a great backdrop and mood. So what really is the difference between them? Well, the photo on the right appears darker and your eyes are immediately drawn to the skies and buildings in the background. The other one on the left though appears a little brighter and you can see more of the tiny buildings right in front of the scene. Would you say that one photo is better than the other? The answer is no because the correct amount of exposure really really depends on the mood that you're going for. So long as you don't lose details in the photo there really isn't much to stress about. In this case, the super dark image can be used to create a black and white silhouette effect and maintain the lighter version in color. So it really goes to show that the different moods created in the scene can be used for different purposes. You notice that the darker version was underexposed. Speaking of underexposure, let's look at another tip that will cover using underexposure when you really aren't sure about the level of light intensity to allow into a scene. So in general, it is best to underexpose the photo. That way, 
you can take a look at it later, give it an edit, or make some other adjustments where necessary. The reverse process is much difficult. If you do have a photo that is super bright, it is really difficult to recover lost detail. It's all super white out and practically impossible to fix many of those scenes captured. So what's a good way to avoid having super bright images? Let's move on to another great tip which deals with taking photos from a different angle to address this overexposure situation. Just a quick refresher. Overexposure is when there's too much light in the scene and there are various levels of light intensity. Let's take a look at an overexposed photo. This was taken facing the sun during golden hour and so you can see a little bit of flare. It's a great effect alright, but it does make the sky and buildings around it lose some detail. Now let's look at another similar shot that was taken at the very same location with the same amount of sunlight. Notice that there is less flare because exposure was somehow effectively controlled. Shadows are more prominent in that scene. And this was avoided by trying a slightly different angle. You can tell that by looking closely at the top part of the two shots. The overexposed version has less seen at the top compared to the other shot with a proper amount of exposure that we are looking for. The ceiling most likely blocked part of the light and therefore made exposure a little easy to control. What's the next thing to do if none of these methods work out for you? Simply take the photo in the direction that light travels. So if the sun is directly hurting your eyes, you have to look the other way and have your back facing the sun and try shooting in that direction to see if it makes a difference. It may seem like overexposure is a bad thing from all the examples we've seen, but we can actually use it to our advantage in certain situations to create really outstanding images. A prime example is during winter. Let's look at using overexposure in snowy conditions. In this photo, you can clearly see the model's face and the background is completely a white out sky which complements the snow on the railing and the streets. Even though the photo has been overexposed, as you can see from the whiteout sky and brightness, everything is in harmony because of the perfect white on white color coordination. If you don't overexpose in such settings, what would happen is you most likely capture muddy looking snow, which may distract the beauty you want to capture in a scene. Let's come back to underexposure for a second and talk about how we can use it to create super cool effect like dramatic strong shadows. We really really want to get underexposure right for shadows because shadows are darker in general and if exposure isn't properly set you might lose detail in the shadows. But when you're underexposed in a scene where there's shadows what happens is you really do make the shadows stand out by drawing a viewer directly into the scene without further distractions. So the cool thing about underexposure in this case is that you use your surroundings to your advantage by making everything appear dark and that ends up complementing the shadows. So you'll notice in this photo that there is a cool and mysterious shadow at the right side of the projected shadow columns. And the exposure was used to achieve this effect. Now the fun part is actually walking through how to get shots like these. So the first thing to do is always maintain the right frame. Once you have your frame set up, tap and hold the right side of the native camera screen kind of in between the shadows where there's a lot of light present. 
Once you see AEAF lock on display, slowly lower the sundial. It's always interesting when there's a strong subject added to a scene. So in this particular scene, I patiently waited for someone to cast a shadow on the wall. It really adds more composition to the photo, and during this process, multiple shots were actually taken. And you notice that because the photo was underexposed, part of the subject's body appears hidden in the shadows. The orange shirt and part of his legs appear illuminated because of the underexposure technique used. Now let's look at the last important tip, which is using HDR to create beautiful night shots. It's important to use HDR mode at night because what happens is your native camera by default with no HDR typically takes images at night that appear grainy. Noise and grain can be interchanged as one word. And that grain isn't really your fault. That being said, there are ways to counter this issue. It's because the iPhone struggles in low light conditions and the grain is a result of that. This is where HDR comes into context. It simply combines multiple shots and then reduces that grain which distracts the beauty in a photo. Now let's look at a demo on the importance of HDR. In this video, HDR mode is enabled and the shutter is now tapped on. If you compare these images, you notice that the HDR version, which is the photo on the right, is definitely the best in terms of clarity, less noise, and detail. It's also important to reduce camera shake when taking photos at night. And you learn some of the best techniques in the next video on clear and sharp photos. Thanks for watching.